there's a consensus of scientists, a large consensus of scientists who believe that if we haven't completely uh, eliminated greenhouse gases or, or offset them completely by 2050, effectively we're inviting climate catastrophe. Do you believe there is a pathway to avoid that catastrophe and what would it look like? I am not one of the doomsday people, which may surprise uh, people. I, I actually think we're on a good path. Um, I, I, but at the same time, I, I want, to, want to caution against complacency. So, so long as we are not complacent, as long as we are, have a high sense of urgency about moving towards a sustainable uh, energy economy, then I think things will be fine. Mm. Um, so I, I, I can't emphasize that enough. As long as we uh, push hard uh, and are not complacent, um, the, the future is going to be great. Don't worry about it. I mean, worry about it, but if you worry about it, ironically, it will be a self-unfulfilling prophecy. Um, so, like, there, there, are, there are three elements to a sustainable energy future. Uh, one is obviously sustainable energy generation, uh, which is primarily wind and solar. Uh, there's also uh, uh, hydro, uh, geothermal, uh, I'm actually pro-nuclear, uh, uh, I think, I think uh, nuclear is fine. Um, uh, but it's going to be primarily solar and, and wind as the... Uh, uh, the, the primary generators of energy. The second part is you need batteries to, uh, to store uh, the solar and wind energy because the sun doesn't shine all the time, the wind doesn't blow all the time. Mm. So you need uh, a lot of stationary battery packs. Um, and then you need uh, electric transport. So electric cars, electric planes, boats, and then uh, ultimately, <laughs> you, you, it's not really possible to make electric rockets, but you can make the propellant uh, used in, in, in rockets uh, using sustainable energy. Right. So. Uh, ultimately, we can have a fully sustainable energy e economy, uh, and um, and it's, it's those three things: solar, wind, uh, stationary right. battery pack, electric vehicles. So, so then, like, what, what what are the limiting factors on progress? The limiting factor really will be uh, battery cell production. So that's the, that's going to that's going to really be the fundamental rate driver, and then whatever the slowest element of the whole uh, ba lithium-ion battery cell uh, supply chain from mining. Uh, and the many steps of refining to ultimately creating a battery cell uh, uh, and putting it into a pack, that will be the limiting factor on progress towards sustainability. Why has full self-driving in particular been so hard to predict? I mean, the thing that really got me, and I think it's going to get a lot of other people, is that there, there are just so many false dawns with, with self-driving, um, where you think, you think you've got the problem, have a handle on the problem, and then it, nope, uh, it turns out, uh, you, you just hit a ceiling, um, and and uh, uh, because what, ha what, what if you if you were to plot the progress, the, the progress looks like a log curve. So it's like yeah, you, a series of log curves. So uh, most people don't know what log curve is, I suppose. But it, 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 show, it, show the shape. It, 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 it goes it goes up sort of a, it, you know sort of a fairly straight right, way, right. and then it starts tailing off, right. and 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 you start and a kind of ocean getting diminishing it. returns. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and, and you're like, uh oh, this it was trending up, and now it's sort of curving over, and not, and and, and you you start getting to these what I call uh, local local maxima, uh, where uh, you, you don't realize basically how dumb you were. Uh, that's uh, and then it, and then and then it happens again. So, um, and I, ultimately, um, now these things, in, 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 uh, you know, in retrospect, they seem obvious, but. Uh, in, in order to solve uh, full self-driving uh, properly, you actually just you have to solve real-world AI. Because um, you, 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 know, you say, like, what are the road networks designed to, to work with? They're designed to work with a biological neural net, our brains, um, and with uh, vision, our eyes. Um, and so in order to make it work uh, with computers, you basically need uh, to solve real-world AI uh, and, and vision, because because we, we we need uh, we we need cameras and silicon neural nets uh, in order to have to, to have self-driving work for a system that was designed for eyes and biological neural nets. It, mm -hmm. You know, when you I guess when you put it that way, it's sort of like quite obvious that the only way to solve full self-driving is to solve real-world uh, AI and sophisticated vision. Admittedly, these these uh, may be an infamous uh, last words, but I I actually am confident that we will solve it this year. I mean, a skeptic uh, is going to say that every year for the last five years, you've you've kind of said, well, 
no, this is the year. Well, I mean, we're confident that it, we'll be there in a year or two, or you know, like it's it's always been about that that far away. But you're, we've got a new architecture now. You're 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 seeing enough improvement behind the scenes to to make you not certain, but but pretty confident that that this by by the end of this year, what in most not in every city in every circumstance, but in many cities and circumstances, basically the the car will be able to drive without interventions, safer than a human. Um, yes, I mean, the, the car currently drives me around Austin most of the time with no interventions. And, 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 and we have uh, over 100,000 people in our uh, uh, full self-driving beta program. Uh, so you can look at the videos that they post online. Um, I do. <laughs> okay, great. Um, and, and uh, some of them are great and some of them are a little terrifying. I mean, occasionally yes. the car seems to sort of like veer off and scare the hell out of people. Um, but it's, it's um, still better. Uh, <laughs> it's still better. Uh, but but you but the, the, no, but but you're behind the scenes looking at the data. You're seeing enough improvement to to, to believe that a, a this year timeline is real. Yes, it, it, that's what it seems like. I mean, I, like I said, yeah. you know, we could be here uh, talking again in a year. It's like, well, yet <laughs> another year went by and it didn't happen. But I think this. I think this is the year. So it's, it feels like at some point in the last year, seeing the progress on. Understanding that, you're, that the AI, the Tesla AI, understanding the world around it, led to a kind of an aha moment in Tesla. Because you really surprised people recently when you said probably the most important product development going on at Tesla this year is this robot Optimus. Yes. Many companies out there have tried to put out these robots. They've been working on them for years, and so far no one has really cracked it. There's no mass adoption robot in people's homes. There are some in, in manufacturing, but it, like, I, I would say that no one's kind of really cracked it. What, is it something that happened in the development of full self-driving that gave you the confidence to say, you know what, we could do something special here? Yeah, exactly. So, you know, it took me a while to sort of realize this, that, that, that in order to solve self-driving, you really needed to solve real world AI. Um, and at the point at which you solve real-world AI for a car, which is really a robot on four wheels, uh, you can then generalize that to a robot on legs as well. The, the two hard parts, I think, like it's not, it, obviously companies like Boston Dynamics have shown that it's possible to make uh, uh, quite compelling, sometimes alarming robots. Right. Um, you, you know, so, so the, the, from a sensors and actuator standpoint, it's certainly uh, been demonstrated by, by many that it's possible to make a humanoid robot. The thing that the things that are uh, currently missing are uh, it, enough intelligence, to, enough intel intelligence for the robot to navigate the real world and do useful things um, without being uh, explicitly instructed. It, so, so the, the missing things are basically real world uh, intelligence and uh, scaling up manufacturing. Um, those are two things that Tesla is very good at, and. Uh, so then we, we basically just need to design the, the uh, specialized actuators and sensors that are needed for a humanoid robot. People have no idea. This is, this is going to be bigger than the car. If you had a robot that really understood the 3D architecture of your house and knew where every object in that house was or was supposed sure. to be and could recognize all those objects, I mean, that, that, that's kind of amazing, isn't it? Like, like that, the kind of thing that you could ask a robot to do would be what? Like, tidy up? Yeah, um, absolutely. <laughs> or make, make, make dinner, I guess, uh, mow the lawn. Do, do you think there will be, basically, like, in, say, say 2050 or whatever, that, that like a, 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 a robot in most homes is, is what there will be, and people yeah, will, will, will I think they probably love will. them and count on them? You'll have your own butler, basically. Yeah, you'll have your sort of buddy robot, probably. <laughs> Yeah. What, what sort of timeline should we be thinking about of the first, the first models that are actually made and sold? Well, you know, the, the, the first units that, that we tend to make are um, for jobs that are dangerous, boring, repetitive, and things that people don't want to do. And, uh, you know, I, I think we'll have like an interesting prototype uh, sometime this year. We, we might have something useful next year, but I think quite likely within at least two years. Uh, and then we'll see rapid growth year over year of the usefulness of the humanoid robots um, and decrease in cost and, and scaling up production. Well, I think the cost is actually not going to be uh, crazy high, um, like less than a car. Initially, things will be expensive because it, it'll be new technology at low right. production volume. The complexity and cost of a car is greater than that of a humanoid robot. Um, so I would expect that it's 
going to be less than a car, or at least equivalent to a cheap car. Okay, so AI is is allowing us to imagine a, a, a differently powered economy that uh, that will create this abundance. What are you most worried about going wrong? Well, like I said, uh, you know, AI and robotics will bring out what might be termed the age of abundance. Um, other people have used this word, and 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 that this is my prediction will be an age of abundance for everyone. Um, the, 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 I guess there's uh, the, the dangers would be the artificial general intelligence or digital superintelligence uh, decouples from a, co a collective human will and uh, goes in a direction that for some reason we don't like, uh, whatever, whatever direction it might go. So the, um, the, the spirit there is that if we're going to make these AIs that are so vastly intelligent, we ought to be wired directly to them so that we, we ourselves can have the superpowers more more directly. But it, that doesn't seem to avoid the risk that those superpowers might um, turn ugly in an unintended way. No, I think it's a risk. I agree. I, I, I don't, I, I'm not saying that I have some uh, a certain uh, answer to that risk. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying like, like maybe one of the things that would be good for ensuring that uh, the future is one that we want is to more tightly couple uh, the human world, collective human world, to digital intelligence.